Good morning and welcome here at the K Morning Show in our TV pavilion uh, at our first show here in Düsseldorf. And uh, I'm very happy to have um, um, my uh, co-moderator uh, this morning, uh, Thorsten Kuhmann from the VDMA. Uh, welcome here on our little breakfast show. Good morning. Good morning. And uh, we have uh, a very special guest today, uh, and I'm very excited. Uh, it is um, Dr. Christopher Holmes, Director Materials Engineering within the Adidas Future Team. That's right, yeah. <laughs> welcome at our show, and I'm, um, um, I already... Um, um, saw a lot of companies preparing themselves for the K. Mm -hmm. Everybody's now eager to have all the machines in the halls ready for this uh, mega show. Um, for you as a, let's say, manufacturer or uh, a company in the, in the textile and fashion and sport industry, is it usual to go to the K? Is that something you are having a, an, an eye on um, all the time or is it special this year? Um, I think it's Probably different for every company, but for Adidas, we're always here at the K, I think. Probably quite surprising. You'll see at least maybe 30 people from Adidas strolling around in their boot shoes and their, their T-shirts. <laughs> so it's a really big event for us. We get to meet our partners, get to find new partners as well. So it's an exciting time. Great. <laughs> Chris, yep. you brought a core guest. That co-guest is <laughs> a very advanced shoe. The important guest. That is a very important <laughs> guest. Tell me something about that shoe. What's so special about this shoe? Uh, so this shoe is very special. I think it's special in a number of ways, not only the technologies that it uses, but it's also the first shoe that's coming out of our speed factory. Okay. So it has uh, a lot of technology. We have the boost. We have um, the upper technology where we can locally place reinforcements. But I think the key thing is it's really coming for that new localized manufacturing. Before talking about the Speed Factory, what made you produce that shoe? Wh what's the driving force behind that? So the driving force always comes from understanding our consumer, really understanding what they need. So what we did was develop a lot of tools which um, allows us to understand where they need different support, what they really need for their sport. And then that's how we're then able to tune the properties to make sure they have the ideal performance. And okay. We need to then develop the tools that allow us to make that happen. And what precisely is the advantage for the user now? Is it, is it uh, some kind of a smart shoe or wh wh what kind of shoe is this? So it has many advantages. So we have uh, a key technology for Adidas, which is Boost. So you can see that's the material here in the, in the mid. So it's really a industry leading technology in terms of its performance. So you can have uh, great performance when you're running in all different temperature conditions and you get really high energy return. And then the second key thing which is really noticeable about the shoe is when you can see the construction of the upper. Okay. So you have all of these locally placed reinforcements and, and what we do is develop tools that allow us to understand whether the athlete needs maybe more stretch or they need more reinforcement, where they need it, and then we can have a tool that allows us to really place it locally and give them the tailored performance that they need. And Chris, this, this shoe can actually communicate with, with the user, isn't it? So that is definitely a, the next benefit that we have. So uh, we've incorporated within this shoe, we have uh, NFC. So yes. um, Near field communication? Near uh -huh. Exactly. So um, the advantage that we have there is it's essentially trying to bring our consumer into our process. So they can understand how the shoe was made, but at the same time they get to provide immediate feedback. And that's okay. something that's really important to the consumer that we have. They want to not only have the product quickly, but they want to be involved. We talk about having co-creation. That's really bringing our creators in and letting them give us feedback and then that will affect the next shoe that we make in the future. I, I'm wondering how does that technology or that kind of product influence your relationship between Adidas and your suppliers? Is that something where your suppliers do have to have a complete different mindset to make that possible? Definitely. I think the, the mindset is probably the most important thing. So we actually don't often talk about suppliers. We talk about partners. And I think that's also a mindset for us. So we really want to work with our partners. Um, we want to work with them at technologies when they're really at the very infancy. And then we develop them together and then we can really do it quickly. Because if they know where the technology is going to go, we know how it needs to perform. We can accelerate that process and we can maybe shorten the overall development process and get it into the, into the product as quickly as possible. 
well, Chris, I've never communicated so far with my shoe manufacturer, <laughs> so I, I think my shoes are completely <laughs> outdated. Um, but talking about um, the, the process of production, mm -hmm. you, you mentioned the speed factory. Uh, so you've got a smart product now, and uh, as I understand, it's also a special kind of production, the speed factory. Can you tell us a little bit about the speed factory? Yes, um, so speed factory for us is, is a new initiative. It's a way of producing locally for that local area and it's producing it in a very fast and flexible way. So it's really just for us the first step on this journey along that route. But what we, what we did was rather than looking at how we traditionally make a product and we, we looked from how we source materials, how we make it into components and and finally into a shoe. After looking at that value chain, we decided to totally think outside the box. And um, we looked at the whole value chain and create new ways of making the okay. shoe that we can do locally in a combination of automated processes, which work in harmony with our, um, with our workers who are really crafting the product to really give us ultimately something which is unique and, and tailored. So, so what we actually do, I mean, Adidas produces uh, in the range of 300 million shoes per year yes. so far. Last year, yeah. And, and now, now you're, you're, you're ha setting up a speed factory. Mm -hmm. um, this is a completely different idea of manufacturing, right? Exactly. Is, is that linked to um, Industry 4.0 in some way? Definitely. I think Industry 4.0 is really going to be the enabler to do these technologies in the future. So... What we really need to answer is that, um, what does our consumer need from an Adidas perspective? And so we have this Generation Z who really want something fast. They want it tailored. So we're using Industry 4.0 to really drive those technologies so that we can produce locally. We can react very quickly to what people need and then we can deliver the product to them in a very quick way. The idea is that we set up these speed factories all over the world and ultimately they can then communicate with each other uh, and to create a, an optimized solution for manufacturing in the future. Okay, so actually Industry 4.0 is enabling you to, mm -hmm. to set up the speed factory and producing right those shoes. Yes, definitely. If, if, we, if you go one step ahead, let's say in, if we would we be sitting here in five years, um, mm -hmm. how much would that shoe be customized? How so far is it now and what, what are the next steps? So at the moment, we're able to already customize the shoe for different groups and for mm -hmm. different um, needs of the, of the consumer. So if you're, for instance, a runner who runs urban, so within a city, they, need a, they have to change direction a lot, they have to stop start, and so they have a different performance than somebody who just goes out and runs in a straight line. So with the technologies we've developed, we can already adjust the shoe to give that mm -hmm. performance, but into the future, the vision is that we can adjust it even um, on a, a higher level when we can really bring people in and create shoes specifically for the needs that they will have. And that's the future vision. When, when you're talking to your suppliers or partners, as you say, um, do, you f or do you have the impression that Industry 4.0 or these innovative technologies are already sufficiently developed or do you have to push them into this direction? How is this um, mood at the time in the, in the industry? I wouldn't say that we ever really push. We would encourage our partners to come on this journey with us. Um, I think the biggest thing is the mindset. It's something unknown. It's something new. Um, it is definitely a, a rev revolution that's happening in terms of Industry 4.0. And so what we are really doing is at the moment we've taken that first step along that path. And I think it's the first step and there's many steps to come. But if you have the right partners, they'll join you with that open mindset and they'll really embrace that. And then you can have a competitive advantage in the future. Are you doing some kind of scouting? You told us that with 30 people from Adidas, you're walking around the, the show here to, mm -hmm. to have a look at the booths and the exhibitors. And, and are you scouting really? Or do you know all these things which are happening in the halls here? Um, I think it's our job to know really what's happening. I think so over the next days, we'll have a mixture of pre-arranged meetings, but also trying to find new partners. Um, but at the same time, you can, with advances in technology, you can do a lot of that scouting using tools from your desk now. So um, you don't have to come and walk the many halls. You can come and now walk them efficiently because you already know who you want to meet, how they're connected, and you can really um, just be more efficient in that process. Very exciting. Chris, um, the case show is an international uh, show. It's, mm -hmm. it's a global show. Adidas is also operating on a global scale. Talking about Industry 4.0, 
do you see differences in the approach to Industry 4.0? If, if you take, for example, China, US, Europe, uh, can you make any differences or is it more or less the same? Um, I think everybody is taking different elements of Industry mm -hmm. 4.0, but the, the way that we're approaching it as Adidas is more on a global, um, a global approach. So we're working out of our key headquarters and building technologies that we can then implement mm -hmm. globally. So um, I think ultimately it's having the right partners and the right mindset, whether mm -hmm. they're located in one area of the world or another. I think that's the key thing, not necessarily where they're located. Oh, very good. <laughs> that is really exciting talking to you because uh, when you are talking to, to the manufacturers of those machines in the halls uh, all the time, then um, of course everybody says Industry 4.0 is to come. This is the future technology. But talking to you makes it really visible what the advantages might be to really individualizing processes, to really customizing um, the, the networking process in the entire industry. That makes really sense now, seeing it from that kind of perspective. When do, um, do you really offer this kind of shoe or this technology to the market? Has it already entered the market? So actually we offered it to the market uh, last month. So it's, this is a real shoe, a shoe that can be bought. Steaming hot. If you could buy one. It's a shoe that can be bought. So um, definitely, as you mentioned, it's a long road ahead and we really do see that. So as Adidas, we always try and relate it to some kind of sporting event and we, we see that we're going to run a long race. But we've taken the first step and we've seen the first challenges, overcome them. And now the second step will be easier and we'll keep moving forward and accelerating. So I think that's the key thing people need to start. And so we started with our um, production and we ran a production producing 500 pairs of shoes which were sold in Berlin last month and in fact we had people queuing out the doors every really? morning <laughs> uh, so we were doing limited releases of the product throughout the month and uh, every night would tell somebody where the next one is going to be and they'd be <laughs> queuing in the morning all, s all of the shoes were sold within hours and uh, it's definitely just the start of things to come so it's a matter as well of, of, of marketing and using the social networks to, uh, to, to offering this product to, to the right community, right? So yes. I guess that the people who are buying those shoes um, are completely different to those who bought sportive shoes five years ago, right? Yeah, and I think the, that's definitely, definitely true. And also the, the way that you communicate is also very different. So I think there's the traditional communication methods are moving away and there you want to target for us our consumer who's 14 to 19 year olds then you target them via social media or you interact with them via social media so chris tell us a little bit about the the next steps um, the speed factory has been set up the first speed factory here in germany yes um, will there be many speed factories then in germany or will you spread out with those speed factories uh, globally what are the next steps? So the, the next steps, so next year we will have a larger produ production facility in Germany. Mm -hmm. And we've just announced that we'll have our second production facility next year, also in the US. Okay. So this is something which is moving fast. Like I said, we've taken those first steps and now we're accelerating. And um, what's to come in the future will be uh, more of these, but I can't really say too much more. <laughs> uh, let me try, <laughs> let me try at least. <laughs> um, w w what's what's the, the, the main driving force for setting up a production at a certain place? Is it located to a country, to a region, to a, to a city? W w what's the driving force behind it? So I think you can, look at the, you can look at the world now and rather than looking at individual countries, I think it's important to look at key cities. Mm -hmm. So there's certain cities that drive the demand and the trends for the whole population. So it's important to make sure that you have a way to interact with your consumer in those key cities. So that's why we will strategically place these speed factories around the world. Um, and at the same time, they can all be interconnected and deliver the product so much quicker. So just taking out just the shipping and the distribution elements from traditional manufacturing means that we can react to the trends and we can really deliver the product when they need it. Well, how about Frankfurt, my, my home city? So that can definitely be sourced very well from our, uh, our speed factory, which has been set up in Ansbach. I guess this is a no. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Dr. Chris Holmes from the Adidas Future team. Thank you very much for being here at our little morning show. It was really exciting talking to you. And I'm very much looking forward to the next technological steps that you're taking. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, for being here at the TV Pavilion at the K 2016 and 
See you again tomorrow morning for our next Little Slow. Thank you for watching. Bye. <laughs>